This lesson is about using data frames. Actually, there's not much I have by way of video on this. The goals are that at the end of this, you should be able to read C data from CSV files into data frames. You should be able to extract individual columns of a data frame using the dollar operator. We know that this gives us the column in the form of a vector. And of course, subset the rows and columns of a data frame and then use the common functions like n row, n call, n row to find the number of rows, n call to find the number of columns, and dim to find both the rows and the columns together. And then the functions class and str to look at the type of elements within the columns of a data frame. Now, since in the earlier course you have already started using data frames, I really don't have a recorded lecture for this. The only thing I would recommend is that you review Lab 2 starting on page 17 of the book that was given to you, Data Analytics with R. This book was given to you in the first course in the form of a PDF. I will post the book again as a part of uh, week 2 materials. You can download the book again if you want and work through the complete lab, Lab 2, starting on page 17. Okay, This will walk you through data frames and uh, in fact many of the R concepts also are reviewed as part of this lab. Might be a useful thing for you to go and work on this lab again. Okay, So in this lecture that's all I'm really doing, asking you to go and work on that and then of course you can proceed to answer all the review questions based on data frames. Uh, just a review of some functions for getting the data frame size. Of course uh, I'm reading the auto mpg.csv into the data frame and then the functions are n row auto which is how many rows are there in the data frame another function is uh, and it turns out that there are 398 rows another function is n call which is how many columns are in the data frame and it turns out there are nine columns in this particular data frame and there's also a function called dim which will give you both the rows and the columns together Right. So if you do dim auto, you're going to get first the number of rows, then the number of columns. So obviously dim auto is a vector of two items, the first element being the number of rows, the second element being the number of columns. Okay. So those are all the things that I would want you to uh, work on in this particular lecture.